Hello, so today I'm going to do a tutorial on the dark side tool, which is a tool that allows you to reconstruct a parent using relatives on the opposite parent side of the family. So, for example, let's say you don't have very many maternal matches in the system, or you haven't tested maternal relatives, but you want to make a reconstruction for the mother of a donor, and instead you can use paternal relatives. So let's see how you do that. Uh, now I am at the tools. I'm at my resource manager. And I've added a new kit that, if you've been watching these tutorials before, was not among my resources. And that's a kit for my Aunt Barbara. And the reason I, is because what I want to do is uh, create a reconstruction for her father, which is my maternal grandfather. Now we've already done a reconstruction for my grandfather in previous videos uh, using the reverse phase tool by extracting uh, information from my mother's paternal side. And we ended up with a 38% coverage in that other video. And there's no need to go back and watch that video in order to know how to use the dark side tool, but I just want to provide some context for those who haven't and to show you where this fits into the workflow for, for those who have. Um, but anyway, you don't need to know all that to use the dark side tool uh, because I'm going to walk you through every step and there's no need to have a pre-existing uh, reconstruction to add to. But I just wanted to do that because that's my particular reconstruction goal today. Uh, to expand this kit we've already done for my grandfather to include some uh, paternal data from my aunt, which is my mom's sister. Okay, so let's go to the tools and we're going to select the dark side tools. And depending on when you're watching this video, this may look a little different on the screen because I'm adding videos and I may be replacing videos from time to time on the screen. So here is the dark side tool. I'm just going to click on it. And then it says select the donor. And this is, uh, it's asking you to select a child donor. In this case, uh, the child will be my Aunt Barbara. And just click continue. And this interface should look very similar to the Phoenix tool if you've ever tried that. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much the same interface face with just a couple restrictions. And I'll explain those as we go through. Um, click continue. And now we've got to select a kit for my Aunt Barbara, and this is actually the first difference. Um, we, here, my Aunt Barbara just has one kit. It's her ancestry kit, and it's you know that's the one we're going to choose. But with the Phoenix tool, you are allowed to choose any type of kit. You could choose a mono kit, you know, a full stereo kit, a partial stereo kit, whatever, um, because it's basically just going to chop up pieces of that and you know extract that to another kit uh, based on who that kit matches. Um, However, with the dark side tool, what it needs to do is it's going to extract information from the opposite copy of the chromosomes at all those locations. Therefore, there has to be an opposite copy of the chromosome, and the kit has to be a full stereo kit for the tool to work. Uh, I may extend it to partial stereo kits in the future, but way beyond the scope of this video. I uh, just need to know that you know there has to be something coming out both ears in order to match on one side and to you know produce output by by uh, you know recording what's playing out the other speaker if you're going to use like a headphone uh, mono and stereo type of analogy. Okay, so now let's click continue and we select the donor. And in this case, you know if if, if you were just from scratch, you know creating a new profile for a donor, you could do that. But I want to add this to my grandfather, who I've already created a donor profile for in a previous video. So I'm just going to do that, and that'll save us a little time too and we'll hit continue. And now here is a list of my Aunt Barbara's matches and we're instructed uh, to pick the ones that are related on the opposite side of the family as my target, Joseph Sesney. And for this demo, I'm just gonna use one match. I'm gonna use the reconstruction we did for my maternal grandmother because she is you know, the epitome of a maternal match to my Aunt Barbara, right? She is her mother. Um, and we did a 38% reconstruction of her in a previous tutorial. So let's find it. Do, do, do Margaret Rice. There we go. And we want the 38% version of her. 
which was our final output from, from our reverse phase video. And it matches my Aunt Barbara at, you know, 1,341 centimorgans, which is pretty good. Um, I'm sure it matches my mother a lot more, probably about, about double that, since that's, uh, it was extracted from my mother. Okay, but anyway, let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and click Continue. And so it says estimated wait time here of 15 minutes, uh, but it's actually probably going to take a minute or two. And in a lot of the videos, I kind of fast forward through these, but I do have a couple things to say here real quick. Um, and this is specific to the situation like I'm doing here where I already have uh, a kit for my grandfather that I created using Barbara's sister. Um, so that was a 38% reconstruction. What do you think we're going to expect to get as output here? My prediction would be about half that uh, if they're average siblings. You know, they're, they're going to be about 19% because... Um, along those segments that were reconstructed using the reverse phase tool and it's the same segments that we reconstructed for my you know my grandmother as my grandfather half of the time she's going to my, my barbara is going to match my mom on the paternal side and uh and half the time she's not so it's going to reconstruct the segments only where my aunt barbara matches Sorry, on the maternal side, where, where, where she matches my mother on the maternal side, because that's, you know, the match we're using, we picked it from the list. Uh, it's going to, about half of those segments that were in that original reconstruction, it's going to find the opposite copies and create uh, portions for my grandfather. So this should be finishing up pretty soon. And we'll see if our... Uh, results match if we get about a 20% or so reconstruction for my grandfather. Anything over 15 will be a good day, I would say. Okay, so I'm back in my resource uh, manager, my DNA inventory at my grandfather here. And as I scroll down, I see the new kit at the bottom. And it's queued for processing. Uh, but you see, it's 19% rec reconstruction ki ki uh, coverage, which means, you know, my mother and my aunt are typical sisters, basically. They uh, share half their, you know, maternal DNA with each other, and, and you know, the other half is from opposite, opposite maternal grandparents. Um, so now what I'd like to do is I would like to take this 38%, this uh, reconstruction from the previous uh, tutorial, and I want to merge it together with this 19%. And where I'm going to do that is on the donor profile, there is a tool called the Humpty Dumpty tool. Scroll down to the bottom here. And in previous uh, videos, I, I'm going to make a dedicated uh, Humpty Dumpty tutorial at some point, but we've gone through how to use option one and option three. Here we're going to use option two, uh, merge mono to stereo. And let's think about why we're doing that. Because there are going to now be places where... I'm reconstructing a por portion of my, my my grandfather, you know, Barbara's father, uh, where there is already reconstruction where that's already been reconstructed uh, using my mother's data. However, it may be on top of each other. You know, my 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 aunt Barbara may have in, inherited some DNA from my grandfather's father, whereas my mother may have inherited on that you know same span of chromosome uh, DNA from my father's mother. And we want to put those both into the file. Uh, so there's going to be stuff coming out both ears in our output. We want to produce a stereo output. And in fact, if we use the mono to mono option, um, it would probably have, you know, decent matching capabilities, but not on those segments that come out stereo. It would just produce junk. Um, it wouldn't yield any matches over those segments, and we don't want that. So... Um, before I press go, oh, how about, let's, it's going to take some time to process, so let's at least get started. Perform the stereo merge, and I'm going to pick the two kits. I happen to know that it's these two. Um, this is the Humpty Dumpty uh, output from the reverse phase, uh, and this uh, from the previous tutorial, and this is the new dark side data. So I'm just going to merge those together, execute the merge on the selected kits. So how much do we think that this 38% plus the 19% is going to equal. I'll give you a hint, it's not going to be a direct addition. You can't just say 38 plus 19 because 
on that 19% where we reconstructed using Barbara, half of that's going to match, match what's already there. It may add some resolution, but it's going to match what my mom had. You know, you could expect, since they're typical siblings, you know, half of that data is just going to be redundant, um, although it may be more detailed. It may fill in some no calls or something like that. Uh, but the other half is going to be all new stuff, um, it, and that should be, you know, 9 or 10 uh, nine or ten percent of the genome you'd expect. So now on a good day, you know, let's let's uh, not get our hopes too too high here. I mean, but I'd say you know, a forty-five uh, percent reconstruction of my grandfather using this process would would be a good day. Um, okay, so let's go back to the resource manager widget and take a look at our new kit. Scroll down to my grandfather again, because that's where it will be stored. And now we've got our 49%. So that's great. Uh, I said 45% would be a good day. And that's that's coming in right about what we expected, right? Because it, it, it was 38 before, so it added uh, 11%. Well, actually, that's that's considerably more than we can uh, would have expected, so that's great. We would have expected 9 or 10% added on, and that's actually a full 11% added on. So... Um, I'm not going to run the matches for this in this video. I will do that, you know, in uh, in between filming tutorials. But they should, you know, if there were the problem is, and the reason I wanted to use the dark side tool here for my Barbara is there aren't many matches to my grandfather in the database because he's from Poland and uh, you know testing is not very popular there. Uh, and uh, he was, he, you know, his his parents were the immigrant gener generation already, so um, there's not a very big family here in the United States either. So um, this kit probably still won't have very many matches, right? but it should, you know, if as as people upload kits to uh, Borland Genetics, which I'm encouraging them to do, um, eventually uh, she will have some some good matches in the database, and the matches we'll see on their match list. Uh, Joseph Sesney, and they'll know how they're related to my Aunt Barbara. So now I hope you have a better understanding of what the dark side tool does and how to use it. And uh, it's a really important tool. I would consider it to be one of the, you know, the core, the core uh, phasing scripts in the in the software. So, um, all right. Until next time. Thank you.